Hey everyone, it's Argonath here from Return of the Fan, and today we're going to be talking about Rotten Tomatoes, the website. I'm sure you've heard of Rotten Tomatoes before, you probably visited it again. Um, so, you probably know what it's about, but for some of you that maybe not, um, basically it's where, um, it's a, a conglomeration of reviews from around the internet, um, the chosen reviewers and so on to review movies and TV shows and stuff, and they come up with what's called a tomato meter. So the tomato meter is basically how good a movie is. So you can see that Venom's got a tomato meter of 60%, Naito and Dadai has got a tomato meter of 84%, um, and so on. So that uh, tomato meter is made up from critics only, not from audience scores. Um, and basically, if a, if a reviewer gives a score of 6 out of 10 or higher, you get a fresh tomato rating for that particular um, movie or TV show. And so, the tomato meter is how many people gave it a fresh rating. So, you could have a tomato meter of 100%, but all of the critics could have given it 60, 6 out of 10. <laughs> 6 out of 10 is not a great movie, right? But can still get a 100% rating um, in the tomato meter. And basically, all of Rot Rotten Tomatoes critics um, that they have are pretty much all kind of woke, left-wing, agenda-driven um, which we'll see when we look at some of the um, things. So don't take anything, any of the tomato meter scores on face value. You need to do a bit of digging. And the best thing is to actually look at the audience scores because you're going to get a very good cross section of people that rate the movie, not just the woke left wing agenda mob, which makes up a lot of people in Hollywood and um, Hollywood critics. So a lot of these critics are also early access critics. So basically they get early access to a movie to get the seat early so they can put out their review and then people go and watch their review to see if they want to watch the movie. So to keep the early access, they can't really say bad things about a movie, right? They have to say good things about a movie, give it good ratings. So um, I never take any early access um, reviews um, to heart. I'd, I'd always wait until I see some audience reviews and so on. Um, even if, if it's again a movie that I'm going to like, even if it has really good reviews, uh, ratings. I just want to wait and see what the audience thinks because I can't. You can't just you can't just trust these um, critics anymore. So let's look at some um, evidence for that. So let's look at the Dave Chappelle, the closer um, comedy special that was on Netflix. So this had a lot of uh, recent controversy because he made some uh, thing, some jokes about transgender people. But he makes jokes about everyone, right? He's an equal opportunity. Uh, comic so <laughs> everything is fair game to him but of course the woke transgender mob um, got on their high horse because some jokes were made about these particular people so we can see on the tomato meter it's got a 43 percent so but that's only seven reviews right so you got to look at how many reviews are actually made let's have a look at some of the snippets of these uh, reviews so a couple of good ones a revolutionary act of defiance Flashpoint comedy at its finest, a near brilliant free-flowing blend of comedy and commentary. If anything, the show is a taunt, its message is clear, cancel me, I dare you. And uh, from what I've seen, that's pretty much what he's saying. What is the function of the court jester to tell the truth? Sure, it makes us laugh too, but the laughter caused by the jester's ridiculous behaviour is usually a poisoned apple. Dave Chappelle is a good court jester. He is actually telling the truth from a comic's point of view, right? So if you do have Netflix, I'd recommend you watch it. Um, so let's have a look at some of these negative reviews. He's rich and famous. He reminds us huge. Clifford, big. He adds he should have he should started acting like it. I guess we need to see the full review to kind of see what he's going on about. Uh, but I'm not going to bother doing that. You can if you want to. Chappelle's most incendiary, troubling and unapologetic one yet. He doesn't have to apologize for anything. He's making jokes. Right? Everyone gets equally offended. <laughs> That's the whole point of a comic. It's what makes them so funny. The comedian's new Netflix special, The Closer, is a panicked defense of controversial past jokes. The humor doesn't land, neither does the justification. So apparently the humor doesn't land for um, people. Mm, we'll just have a think about that when we look at the uh, audience reviews. Chappelle's rampant transphobia. I don't think the whole special was just all transphobia. It's probably just a certain part of it. Um, I haven't been able to see it yet, but I severely doubt the whole thing is transphobic, right? 
doesn't need to be a problem as long as the jokes land, but his obsession with grievances supersedes any pretense of crafting actual humour. Um, whoever this person actually is. Ian Thomas Malone. Is that your picture? Your Ian Thomas Malone? Oh, of course! They must be a transgender person. No wonder they're against all the... Tra no wonder he's... She is labeling, labeling Chappelle um, a rampant transphobist. So let's go back to the ratings. Look at the audience score. 96%. <laughs> so 96% of people liked this... Um, and out of 2,500 ratings, hmm, who do I take? The Woke Critics um, Review, 43% um, people thought it was um, uh, trash, and the 96% audience score. I think I'll take the audience score, because uh, I'd more rather trust their judgment. Let's look at the next thing, Masters of the Universe Revelation. So if you don't know about this, this was a um, reboot of the Masters of the Universe. Um, uh, it was an animation, uh, not CGI, but it was an animation, um, and basically they cut um, Prince Adam, who turns into He-Man, and made the female um, people much more powerful than him. So essentially, they turned the tables and made the females um, the central theme of the show, when it should be a He-Man show. Right, so again, if we look at the critic ratings, 94%. So 94 people gave it a fresh rating. Look at the audience score, eh, eh, 39%. Right, 39% um, of people um, actually liked it. Everyone else hated it because of the woke left leanings of that show. Again, don't trust the critics because anything that meets their woke narrative, they're going to praise it highly. Next thing is Fauci. You remember Fauci, Dr. Fauci? They did a documentary on him. I don't know what for. 35 reviews, 91% tomato reader, 500 ratings, 2%. <laughs> 2% of people like this documentary. <laughs> Look at the disparity between the so-called critics and actual normal people, right? This is why you don't take any um, reviews to heart. Always do some research get a good grounding in terms of what the audience actually thinks because um, those are the people you should be trusting. Anyway, just a quick, uh, just, it's just really funny looking at the dichotomy between woke critics and actual people that go to watch a show. There's a huge disparity there. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you're welcome to give me a thumbs down. If you like my content, please give me a subscription. It just helps getting my content out there. That would be much appreciated. And hopefully I'll catch you in the next episode.